Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna. Today is Monday, February 11th, 2019, and this is a podcast about knitting and also um, a children's literature book with a fiber related content. If you're stopping by for the first time, thanks so much for joining me and returning viewers, thanks for coming back. Uh, today I will be sharing some finished objects, some works in progress, our children's literature book, and um, a giveaway we had from the last podcast. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, my first finished object is going to be a pair of socks that I finished, and this is yarn by Artistic Lily, and it is a colorway called Murder on the Orient Express, and this was the inspiration for the color um, which is from the most recent version of um, the movie, or and perhaps that's even the book cover. I don't know. I read the book uh, with a much older um, dust jacket on it. So the socks, um, the sock kit came with a contrasting um, red for the heels and toes, and I would have had enough for the cuffs, but I wasn't sure, and I knit them top down, so I thought I'd just start off with... Um, the yarn itself and it's a variegated yarn with some dark blue and some almost black that it could be navy or something a little bit of gray and then the lighter blue and um, I think there are 72 stitches cast on and I use a size 1 needle I did do the um, umbrella toe from the drippity drop sock pattern by Kay Jones of the bakery bears and a normal um, just typical slip stitch heel pattern. So that's my first uh, finished object. And the second one is another pair of socks. And this is my Desert Vista Dye Work socks. And I used the Vanilla is the New Black sock pattern, which is not a vanilla sock pattern. It um, has a different sort of heel. And that's what's special about the pattern is this heel, which you can see these pearl stitches uh, mixed with um, the stockinette stitches and you're doing increases along the center back um, and that's how you get your increases for the heel. So you start um, the, I mean I, I think they've written one maybe for a toe up, but this starts um, cuff down. So um, I actually wasn't following the pattern at all except for the heel part, um, but I think it's pretty much, I did it pretty much the way that uh, she had done the pattern, but I have my um, two by two rib for the cuff and then just do the leg and when you're ready to start your heel then you follow either a chart or written directions for increasing and it um, gives you all of this space in the heel area and then you do a decrease through just um, doing the heel turn. So the heel turn takes up all of the, ex it goes to about here, takes up all of the extra gusset stitches, and then you're left with just the rest of your uh, foot and toe to do. And I also did that same um, umbrella toe from that drippity drop sock pattern on this pair. So these had two ends to weave in, the one from the beginning and the one um, at the end. I liked that I like this pattern a lot. It fits over my um, very high arch really well. It was easy and fun. And then you don't have gusset stitches to pick up or reduce. And that's because you're doing it through this um, heel turn, which of course with striped yarn, you've got fewer stitches um, on your needles across here so you get wider stripes. Um, and that's on the bottom of the foot. It, I know you can see it here, but when you're wearing it, it's on the bottom of your foot. So I really liked the pattern. Um, it's not something that right now I could do without looking back at the pattern, but once you just get started doing it, you don't have to look back un until maybe you're just trying to check if you're done or, you know, how far to go. I did, I had the, um, the chart up on, um, my iPad and I think I was using Knit Companion for that, so I could um, move the little um, guide along to know, okay, I'm, I'm now ready to stop and do the heel turn. So, um, these are Desert Vistas Dye Work Socks, and I said I was going to be doing this for um, every month this year, and um, it is... Um, not a club, but I think they call it, maybe they call it a club. I can never remember these things. But over on the Desert Vista Dye Works, um, on their um, Ravelry page, they have a group. 
So you post your socks as you start them at the beginning of the month, and then when you finish them, you post them again. You just update that post, and so you have both um, photos in there. And then you can also do it over, over on Instagram. Well, I finished these, I don't know, around the 20th or so of January, 19th, 20th, and I posted it, the um, finished socks, on Instagram, and I forgot to go back over to the Ravelry page. I thought I'd done it. I guess because I did on Instagram, I thought I'd done it. So already the first month, I'm a fail. I didn't fail doing it. I failed. I, I posted the beginning picture, but not the finished object. So I guess I've already blown that, but I'm still going to do it because I, I bought the yarn. So my next finished object is, oh, some dish cloths. I have, am doing the Yarn Hoarders Dishcloth Challenge, and that, um, I think right now it's just posting on Instagram. She had talked about on the last podcast that I watched, and I don't think there's been one since then, that she might put it over in Ravelry, wasn't sure, but um, I do see lots of people still posting on Instagram. So, I have finished six, and I had already done three. So these were the first three that I did this year. And these were all with um, Knit Picks Dishy. And then these three are also Knit Picks Dishy. Uh, pink and uh, this is Blush and Swan and Lilac Mist, I think. Um, so there's three more. And these are all going to be given away um, for Valentine's. So I need to get them uh, that taken care of right away. So I wanted to show them now. But I also have three more that I did. These three are out of the, um, oh, you know what it is. <laughs> I know you're screaming it at me right now. It's not peaches and cream, but it's sugar and cream. It's the yarn that you can, cotton yarn you can get at most any place. Michaels, AC Moore, Joanne Fabrics. And um, I do have all the colors listed. I have a project page, and every time I finish three more, I'm taking a picture and then updating that page. And I did put the color numbers, but I don't remember them right now. So I have a blue, which might have been a blueberry. And then I have this blue and yellow, which might have been called sunshine. And then I had this light blue, which I think was called light blue. So this is another set. I always like to do sets um, with these. Now, knitting with this versus this. This is so, this dishy is so much easier on my hands. So I really, um, but I have a lot of this yarn. And um, so I'm going to knit it up, all that I have. But I'm only gonna knit one out of each ball of yarn. And then I'm just getting rid of the rest because it really hurts my hands. So I'm. I am working on these every day, but I'm not working on this kind every day. I am go going to finish up what I have. These, uh, this is dishy. It's just, it's a, seems a little thinner and a little stretchier, and it just really works better for me. So um, I am going to use it up. I bought it. I'm gonna, not going to get rid of it, but I'm going to continue with dishy whenever I can. So that's my last finished object. And then um, let's go to the works in progress. So I started another pair of socks. And this is the, I had um, put aside some yarn or in a basket. And I'm having my grandson pick um, every month what I sh which skein I should use. And he picked this one. Now this one is, um, this is the book The Mouse and the Mo Motorcycle by Beverly Cleary. It's a classic. This is a, a cover that's not the one that um, I ever read from. But you'll notice this striping pattern along the edge and this is I bought this recently so it um, because I plan to give it with the socks but the colorway follows this and I've only done one repeat and I'm doing these one at a time magic loop size one and you can see I've got those larger yellow stripes and then the different colored stripes in between. I think I have done one repeat. Um, it felt like I was um, at the next color change, but until I go farther, I'm actually not really sure because the, the pattern is um, kind of a long one, I think. So I'm using um, that, that skein when I purchased the, this is mustache yarn, Mouse and the Motorcycle, and it came with this white 
for the heels, cuffs, and toes. So um, I, that's what I'm doing too. There is some white in here and some white in the sock. And this is in my little sock bag that you can see through here. And I do have a, um, a little um, notions pouch. This is from Whimsy Stitches and they're on Etsy. And I like to keep socks in it because it has a sock pattern. So that's my first work in progress that um, I have not worked as diligently on. I'm also making those Desert Vista Dye Work socks this month. And so this I want to be done by the end of February. I am using their color called Happy Birthday Cupcake. And when you look at the stitch, the um, stripe pattern, it looks like, actually it probably shows better this way, like cupcake frosting sprinkles on top. That's what I'm thinking. I'm ready to start the toe on the first sock and then I will put um, an afterthought heel in, 72 stitches, size one. And um, this is a sparkle yarn. You can see it a little bit there. And so that's um, my next work in progress. And then I'm also working on a shawl, the Amazing Day Shawl. And this is by Hohi Locatelli. And where's my bag? Oh, here it is. I, was, I thought I was going to have to run downstairs when I was sure I'd brought everything up. So this is the Amazing Day Shawl. And it's um, a really simple pattern. And I told you last time that um, I had read people's comments because I, usually before I start a project, I'll look and see if there are projects on Ravelry and, some, and I filter through to get the ones with helpful hints. I like to read what people have to say just to give me a little bit of a heads up. And lots of people were saying, oh, great car knitting. And you don't need the pattern and memorizable. And I'm thinking, uh-uh, uh-uh, not me. But, you know, it actually did get to that point. I know what's coming next. I do refer to the pattern just to make sure. Um, and um, so you need the pattern, but you actually, I, I can do, I know what's coming next. I just look and quickly look, see what color. And I know it's six rows and you repeat them and I can do it without the pattern. So that's kind of shocking. Now, this is going to look super messy. Um, I do not weave in my ends until after I block the shawl. So even when it's blocking, it looks messy. And then I go back after everything's been stretched and then weave in the ends. And there's lots of color changes. So there's lots of wet ends to weave in. So you'll see it looks pretty messy from that. But I do only have 12 rows to go and then the bind off. But these rows are about three, almost 350 stitches right now. So um, it's, they're long rows. Oh, here we go. Just you can kind of get an idea. This is the bottom. Let's so turn it this way. Here we go. It's a crescent-shaped shawl, so of course blocking will really help to um, straighten things out. There are. This came. I bought it as a kit, and I bought the kit down at House of Yarn in Nashville, Tennessee. It came with a pattern, and the pattern is so nice. It's on cardstock, and it's. Um, like it folds out like a book and then has an insert. So it's a very nicely done color printed pattern. And um, it doesn't look so wonderful now because I write all over it. And I, I possibly could have. What did, did it matter though? I probably won't knit it again. So um, anyway, I've written all over it as I always do. But it came with six mini skeins and then one main color. Um, this mini skein I won't use again. So you can see um, with what they gave me, there's quite a bit left. Um, they won't all be exactly the same size, but um, there's a lot left. Now, of the main color, sorry about pausing there. There it is on the floor. I'm a little tiny bit nervous. Uh, you know, when you get to the end and it starts getting floppy and falling apart, you think, oh boy, I'm about to run out. And I have 12 more rows to go. And um, they're 300 stitches. Three, it's going to be 370 something stitches when I'm done. So I'm a little concerned. Um, but if I run out, then I will just end the shawl right there. That's what I'll, that's what I'll do. So I've got it on a pretty long needle right now. 
not that it needs to be it's a slightly inconvenient but I always like to lay it out so at least I can start to see how it's going to look so that's the amazing day shawl and the the kit that I purchased let me get the card if I can find it it is backyard fiberworks and this is the graphic pop is the name of the mini skein set six colors and um, the main color was called Dove and that was a hundred gram skein so I think my gauge looks looser than the picture of the shawl and once I block it I think it will look even looser but that's that may be why I could run out of yarn because I'm possibly knitting too loosely but next thing I'm working on see I've shown you two pair of socks and the shawl and um, did I say that the mouse and the motorcycle was mustache yarns? I hope I said that at the time. Let's see. My, the next thing I've been working on is my cozy memory blanket. And I'm not going to bore you with showing um, you the whole thing. I mean, really, it's just adding little squares and such. But I'm up to 168 squares. I think I need to do 24 more. I might be at 162. It's either 162 or 168. And when I do 24 more, I'll be where I think I want it to be. At that point, I'm going to decide if I want it a little bit longer. I think that's wide enough because I can lay it over my lap now, just making a lap blanket. So it, it goes width-wise okay. It just needs to be um, longer so two rows longer um, I think is going to do it and then I'm going to do some kind of a border which uh, I'm still undecided about uh, what kind of a border I'm going to put on it but depending on what kind you know it'll make it a little bit bigger too so uh, maybe I can get a picture to put in because you just really can't get any idea I don't think maybe if I do this this is the width it's 12 squares wide and then right now it's 14 squares long so whatever that math is um, is how big it is right now so that's pretty much all I'm working on I have a hat I meant to be working on but I just really haven't gotten around to it um, frequent watchers will know that I watch my grandson and I get a lot of my knitting time done when he's asleep in the afternoon for his nap and he's kind of working his, his growing his way out of those naps and so I'm losing some of what was my sit down and knit time um, in the afternoons and then also in the mornings I would always um, I have to go to my daughter's early so she can leave early and he's been asleep and I would knit in the mornings and um, the last three or four weeks he's been up when I get there at six so that's another time that you know I used to get a little bit done so my knitting time seems to be going down a bit which is okay I'm, I had more I have plenty of knitting time but um, that's why I think it's taking me a little bit longer to be working on things so the next segment is going to be our children's literature book with a fiber related content so the children's literature book that I have today is called Knit Together by Angela Dominguez. And this is a really sweet story about a little girl who likes to draw. And this is me. I love to draw. But she says mom likes to knit and she thinks knitting's better than drawing. And why is knitting better than drawing? In her words because you can wear it so you can see them both and including the little dog wearing their knitwear out on the beach. So the little girl wants to learn to knit and um, she is a small child and discovers it's, it's actually kind of hard for her. And you know, of course her skills will um, improve as she ages, but you know, it can be pretty hard for a young child to knit. And so they decide to work together and combine their skills, the drawing skill, with the knitting skill and um, it, ta it takes her a while to get some inspiration but in the end they um, they are inspired and they go shopping and mom does the knitting and they end up with a drawing they can wear 
So she designs um, from inspiration because they've been at the beach. A sailboat um, picture is turned into a blanket that they can sit um, under. If you're on a, I can see that Pacific Northwest sitting with a blanket on the beach along the shore there or up in Maine or well, any place in the wintertime cold at the beach to have that blanket. So I thought this was a, a really sweet story of how you can and, and she says, too, in there that um, they were able to make something they couldn't have done alone because they worked together. It was a little um, collaboration with art. So I thought this was a really sweet book. Um, and now we want to talk about our giveaway winner. The last um, podcast I shared with you, Just Like You, Little Lamb, written by Melissa Dalkey. And I did not read to you the description on the back about who Melissa is, but she has um, a business called Acorn Willows. She is an ND yarn dyer. So she's also a knit crochet designer. Softies are a favorite and a needle felter. When she isn't surrounded in fluffy wool, she's homeschooling and enjoying time with her family in the beautiful Flint Hills. So um, this book is going to go to, I did the YouTube comment picker, and um, unlike Ravelry where there's a numbered post, YouTube sorts through and finds unique posters. So you can post as many times and it'll only you know, put yours, your name in once. And it gives me a name, so um, I won't have any other information than a name. And um, it, there were 137 unique comments, and a comment was your way of putting an entry to get this book. And this copy is going to Diana Berry. So Diana, if you are not on, if you're on Ravelry, um, it's that's a really easy way to get hold of me through a private message on Ravelry. That would be a great way to let me know your address so that I can mail your copy to you. However, if you're not on Ravelry, I do have um, an email account for the podcast. It's in a pickled knitting at gmail.com. And if you'd please, in the subject line, put um, book winner. That way, you know, because I get a lot of weird stuff in there. So um, just junk mail or lots of social and promotional things. So if you could just do that, that'll help me be sure and find. Um, your reply so that I can get this mailed off to you, which I will do as soon as I can. Um, I always plan to get out, but then, you know, weather and schedules and things, I might not get it mailed quite as uh, quickly as I would like to, because I really like to just, as soon as I get your address, put it in its mailer and get it on its way. I'm really close to the post office, so I can do that, but sometimes I just can't make it there. Oh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, um, that's all I have, except for the end here, I did want to do my um, But No One Asked Me segment. So I'm going to need my phone for that. Hold on a sec. Before I get to um, No One Asked Me, I did want to remember to talk about the uh, make-along that we have over in the Ravelry group. And if you aren't already a member, you can go to the groups tab on Ravelry and search for In a Pickle Knitting or just Pickle. And I think it comes up to our site and join the group. And um, I think right up at the top, there's a chatter thread and a finished object thread for your, um, it's called our Winter Warmers Make Along. And what you uh, make in this make along is you can sew, knit, crochet, or weave um, anything that you keep warm with in um, cold weather. So sweaters and cowls and um, earmuffs and hats and gloves and socks and shawls and just anything, uh, blankets, anything that keeps you warm, you can put in there. Please make it um, either a combination of things that add up to 50 grams or one thing that has 50 or more grams um, in the finished object. And um, post them over in the finished object thread and also drop into the chatter thread and post something there too. And that way people can ask you questions if they want to know about your pattern. It's always nice in the finished objects thread where there is no chatters to go ahead and tell what yarn and uh, what your pattern is because those are uh, common questions or anything else that uh, you think someone might want to know and can't can't ask you in that thread. And then if you're putting it in the chatter thread, they can ask you questions and, and give you comments about it. So that's our make along that's going on. And I think in the chatter thread, I said it was ending March 1st, but I was pretty sure I said on the podcast, it was gonna end at the beginning of spring. So it's really gonna end at the beginning of spring. And if I'm not podcasting that day, 
it's whenever I podcast after that. So you, there's always leeway there because my feeling is um, give you more time, more inclusive, um, more things to do is the more the better. So um, what was I going to talk about with um, no, no one asked me? And last time I talked about patterns and some difficulties that I've had occasionally with patterns. And I noticed a lot of other people um, have had those same struggles and issues. So I think, you know, it, it's kind of nice if you can share pattern makers where you don't experience struggles um, that the patterns are clearly written and also uh, maybe if you've had good experience with a pattern uh, designer perhaps responding to your question and I know they probably cannot respond to everybody but um, that does help people who are confused and I did get that comment a few times so what today am I talking about? Well, no one asked me what I've been reading um, recently, but I have, um, I am an Audible member and I also use my public library. I'm a, I have a card for two public libraries. Where I live in Virginia, um, all of our neighboring counties have reciprocity. So if you, uh, if you're a neighborhood, County, you can um, get a library card for more than one library, and I do have two library cards to public libraries, and so I uh, download audiobooks from them as well as from Audible. And sometimes I kind of, you know, peek and valley, listen to a lot, and then maybe I'll get in a drought where it's I can't find anything to listen to. So um, then I'm maybe more on podcasts. Um, this is always something I'm doing while I'm, you know out and about or knitting or whatever. So I have recently listened to several really good books and so I thought I'm going to share a few of these with you. And the first one is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen, I think. And um, this is a twist and turns kind of book and some things that come at you by surprise and I love a book with a good twist. And so that started me out saying, oh that was so good I want to right away, you know, I could not stop listening to that. Um, and of course, if you found a new author that you like, you might like something else that they've written. So I found that um, the same team um, teamed up together to write An Anonymous Girl, and um, that was really good too. I, I really couldn't pick which one was even better because they were just both really good. And then it seems like a lot of the books that I've been reading are about liars, and li or lying is in the title. It just... Um, I've been surprised, but I have liked these. Um, Our Little Lies by Sue Watson. Uh, the Liar's Wife by Samantha Hayes. Uh, the Lies We Told by Camilla Way. I mean, what's going on with all the lying? Now, this is a little different. Into the Darkest Corner by Elizabeth Hayes. This one I really liked, but, you know, it, if you read suspenseful books, a lot of times the female protagonist... I don't know. It's like they have good sense and then all of a sudden they're just, I've heard it said before, too stupid to live. It's like, what? You know, all along you've been cautious and now you're just, you know, off, you know, in a dark basement with an axe murderer outside. I don't know. So it was a little bit of that, but not too much that it, you know, really started making me mad. And then I'm right now listening to, but I've, I'm only about a third of the way through is Truth and Lives. Truth and Lies and by Caroline Mitchell. So no one asked me, but those are some things that um, I've been listening to while knitting. And <clears throat> when that happens, it means my podcast listening gets, um, excuse me, I have um, Sjogren's Syndrome, which gives you dry eyes and a dry mouth. So I, that's why you probably see me swallowing a lot. I, I don't have a lot of moisture in my... Um, in my mouth and it, <clears throat> excuse me it does cause me to choke sometimes and I typically stop the podcast a lot you'll see a lot of breaks and then that's usually to take a drink but I just left my drink downstairs when I went to uh, grab my phone so don't have my drink here and I would like to go ahead and finish this up I don't have a whole lot more time left so I'm gonna keep going here um, but that's pretty much it today um, it, Thanks so much for tuning in. I, I hope that uh, you found something that you enjoyed watching today and that you'll join me again next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.